Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. This week I'm reading three stories from Japanese fairy world. And our last story was, well, it was a bloody story. It was a happy story, but it was a bloody one. And this story is less happy and also less bloody. And also, I may be butchering some of this pronunciation. Usually I I make that declaration on the Monday when I start Japanese tales, but today I feel like it might happen. This is the Sazaye and the Tai. Sazaye is a shellfish, which is very proud of its shell. This is high, full of points like towers and thick like a castle wall. When feeding, enjoying itself, or moving around, its long neck and body are stretched out before it, armed with its hard operculum, which is like an iron shield, or the end of a battering ram. The operculum fits into the entrance of its shell like a trap door. As soon as any danger is near, it pulls in its head and slams itself shut with a loud noise. On account of the hardness and thickness of his shell, the Sazaye is the envy of the soft-bodied fishes that covet its security. But on the other hand, the Sazaye, though a slow-moving creature, is apt to be too proud of his defense and trust too much to his fancied security. One day, a tai, a redfish, and a herring were looking at the strong shell of the Sazaye and became quite envious. The tai said, What a mighty strong castle you do live in, Mr. Sazaye. When you shut up your shell, no one need even try to touch you. You are to be envied, sir. The Sazaye was tickled at the flattery, but pretending to be very humble, he shook his head and said, It is very kind in you, my lords, to say so, but my little hut is nothing but a shell. Yet I must say that when I lock my door, I do not feel any anxiety, and I really pity you poor fellows who have no shell at all. He had hardly got the last word out of his grisly throat when suddenly there was a great splash, and away darted the tie and herring, never resting their fins or tails a moment till safe out of danger. The Sazaye drew in his flap in the twinkling of an eye, and keeping as quiet as possible wondered what the noise was. Was it a stone or a net, or a fish hook? He wondered if the tie and herring were caught. Surely they must be, thought he. However, I'm safe thanks to my castle shell, he muttered. So drawing his trap tighter, he took a long nap. When he woke up, quite refreshed, he cautiously loosened his trap and peeped out. How strange everything looks. Am I dreaming? said he as he saw piles of fish, clams, prawns, and lobsters lying on a board all around him. Ah, what is that? clapping himself shut as a great black nosed and long whiskered dog poked his muzzle near him. Poor shellfish. There he lay in a fishmonger's shop with a slip of paper marked ten cash, one tenth of a cent, on his back. A few hours later, purchased by a laborer's wife for his dinner, he was stewing along with several of his relatives in his own juice. The castle, of which he was so proud, serving first as a dinner pot, then as a saucer, after which it was thrown away in a heap and burned into lime. And that is the story of the Sazaye and the Tai. Again, it's a sad tale. The tale of the poor shellfish who, while his security was always top-notch with his hard shell, He was too slow to avoid being captured and turned to dinner. This is Dan Schultz with the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.